kingdom, I'm not sure which of the dukes he values most. Yeah. Is not this your son, my lord? I have blushed so often to admit it that I am raised to it. I can't conceive it. Oh, sir, his, like this young fellow's mother could, whereupon she became brown wound and had indeed, sir, a son for her cradle ere she had a husband for her bed. <laughs> Do you smell a fault? I can find no fault, not when the issue is so well. But I have a son, sir. By order of law, some year elder to this, Edgar, who is no yet dearer than my behalf. Do you know this noble gentleman, Edmund? No, my lord, sir. The Lord Kent. Remember him hereafter as my honorable friend. My services, to your lordship. I must love you and suit to know you better. I shall study, sir. He's loving you. The king is coming. Bred me, loved me, 
I return those duties back as I write fit. How is it my sisters have husbands when they say they love you all? Happily when I wed, the Lord whose hand must take my plight shall carry half my love with him, half my care and duty. Sure, I will never wed like my sisters to love my father all. Does thy heart open this I, my good Lord. So young and so untender. So young and so true. Let it be so. Thy truth then be your dower. For by the sacred radiance of the sun, the miseries of hell and the dark night, here I disclaim all paternal care. And as a stranger to my heart and to me, hold thee from this forever. Let my liege come the not between the dragon and his wrath. I loved her most, and sought to set my rest on her kind nursery. Hence, and avoid my sight. Let my grave be my peace. Call France. Who stares? Call Burgundy. Cornwall. Albany. My two daughters' dollars digest this third. I do invest you jointly with all my power, preeminence, and all the large effects that took with majesty. Ourselves, by monthly course, with a reservation of a thousand nights, a hundred nights, shall our abode by you be sustained in due terms. As for the rest, all the addition of a king, with the sway, the revenue, the execution of the rest, beloved sons, yours. For your own day, whom I have ever honored as my king, love as my father, follow as my teacher and Lord. I just. The bow is bent and drawn, make from the shaft. They fall, madam. Though the fall be made the region of my heart, reverse this madness, and in thy best consideration, check this hideous craftiness. By Apollo! By Apollo! King!
that good may come from words of now.
Bid farewell to your sisters. Use well, our father. To your professed bosoms I commit and so farewell to you both. Prescribe on us our duty. Let your study be to content your lord, who hath received you. Come, my fair friend. <laughs> I think our father will hence tonight. That's most certain. And with you. Next month with us. You see how full of changes his age is. He always loved our sister most. Tis the infirmity of his age. If our father use authority with such disposition, we must do something and in the heat. Thou nature art my goddess, to thy laws my services all bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of customs and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me for absent twelve or fourteen moonshine's lag of a brother? Why, bastard? Wherefore, base? When my dimensions are as well compact by my mysterious, my shape was true as honest madame's issue? Why brand they us with base? Baseness, bastardy, base, base. Who in the lusty stealth of nature take more composition and fierce quality than doth within a dull, stale, tired bed? Go to creating old tribal pots that trying to sleep and awake. Well then, legitimate Edgar, I must have your land. Oh, father's love is to the bastard Edgar as to the legitimate. Fine word, legitimate. Well, my legitimate. If this lets to speed and my invention thrive, Edmund the Bay shall top the legitimate. I grow. I prosper. Now, gods, stand up for bastards. Cordelia and the noble Kent banished? The king gone tonight? Edmund, how now? What news? So please, your lordship, none. Uh, what paper were you reading? It's nothing, my lord. Well, come, if it be nothing, I should not need to I beseech you, Prince. Pardon me, sir. It is a letter from my brother that I have not all read, and for so much as I have perused, I find it not fit for your looking. Give me the letter, sir. I hope for my brother's justification. He wrote this but as a trial of my virtue. <coughs> this policy and reverence of age makes the world bitter to the best of our times, keeps our fortunes from us till our oldness cannot relish them. I begin to find an idle and foul language in the oppression of Aged tyranny, come to me that of this I may speak more. If our father would sleep till I waked him, you should enjoy half this revenue forever and live the beloved of your brother, Edgar. Conspiracy. My son Edgar, he had a hand in this, a heart and a brain to breed it in. When came this to you? Who brought it? It was not brought to me, my lord. There's the cutting of it. I found it thrown in at my window. Do you know the character to be your brother's? It is his hand, my lord. But I pray his heart is not in the contents. Did he not sound you out in this matter? Never. But 
I have heard him oft maintain it to be fit that sons of perfect age and fathers declining, the father should be as poor to the son, and the son manage his revenue. Villain, villain, unnatural villain! His very thoughts in the letter. Unnatural, detestable, brutish villain, worse than brutish. Seek him, Sarah. I shall apprehend him. Abominable villain. Where is he? I do not well know, my lord. I, I dare pour down my life on him. Now here I wrote this, but to feel my affection to your honor and to no other pretense of danger. Think you so? If your honor judges me, I will place you where you should hear us confer this, and that's without any further delay than this very evening. You cannot be such a monster. Nor is not sure. To his father that so dearly and entirely loved him. Hell on earth! Find him, find him then. Frame this business after your own wisdom. I shall see I will be of due resolution. I will see him presently and acquaint you with all. These late eclipses of the sun and moon pretend no good to us. Love cools, friendship falls off, brothers divide, and the bond cracked between son and father. This was the best of our time. Machinations, hollowness, treachery, and all ruinous disorders Follow us disquietly to our graves. Find out this building. Then. Do it carefully. And the noble and true-hearted kid vanished. <laughs> His offense? Honesty. Strange. Strange. This is the excellent fuckery of the world. That when we are rich, sick, and fortunate, often by the surface of our own behavior, we make guilty of all disasters, the sun, the moon, and stars, as if we were villains on necessity. Fools by heavenly compulsion, knaves, thieves, treacherous, by spherical predominance, enforced obedience, drunkards, liars, and adulterers, and all that we are evil in, by a divine thrusting on. <laughs> An admirable evasion of poor mastermind to lie his goatish disposition on the charge of a star. My father compounded with my mother under the dragon's tail, and my nativity was under Ursula Major. <laughs> so that it follows, I am rough and leeches. Foot! I should have been that I am, had the maniness star in the firmament twinkled upon my bastardizing Edgar. Oh, now, Brother Edmund. When saw you my father last? Was the night gone by? Spake you with him? Two hours together. Found you no displeasure in him by words, no continence? None at all. Bethink yourselves where you may have offended him. The heat of his displeasure at this instant so rages with the mischief of your person, it was scarcely alive. So villain has done me wrong. That is my fear. I pray you, till the speed of his rage goes slower, retire with me to my lodging. Pray you, go. If you should stir abroad, go on. 
Uh-huh, brother. Brother, I advise you to the best. Shall I hear from you or not? I do serve you in this business. Pray you, brother, away. <laughs> A credulous father and brother noble, whose nature is so far from doing harm, he suspects none. <laughs> On whose foolish honesty my practices rides easy. I see the business. Let me, if not by birth, have lands by wit. All with me meets that I can fashion fit. Did my father strike my servant for chiding of his fool? I am. Huh. By day and night he wrongs me. Every hour he flashes into some gross crime or other that sets us all at odds. I'll not endure it. His nights for riotous, and himself upbraids us on every trifle. When he returns from hunting, I will not speak with him. Say I am sick. As you say, madam. Ah, so banish the king. Thou canst serve where thou dost stand condemned. So it may come. <laughs> That the Lord that thou lovest shall find thee full of labors. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, you, sir. You. Come help me, sir. Who am I, sir? My lady's father. My... <laughs> you lay? You horse and dog? You slave, you cur? I am none of these, my lord. Do you bend your looks with me, you rascal? <laughs> I'll not be struck, my lord. Nor trip neither, you base football player. Come, arise, sir. Go to, here's your wisdom. Help! Curtis of my face, well. Now, my pretty name, let me hire him too. Here's my coxcomb. Sirrah, you were best take my coxcomb. Why, fool? Why, 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 why? <laughs> For taking one spark that's out of favor, if thou cannot smile as the wind sits, thou canst go. <laughs> there, take my capstone. Why, this fellow has banished two owns daughter and did the third against will against the third blessing against his will. If thou follow him, thou must need wear my capstone. How now, Nanko? Would I have two capstone and two daughters? Huh? If I gave them all my living, I keep my cats home myself. There's mine. Beg another of thy daughters. Take heed, sir. The whip! Truth! A dog must to kennels. He must be whipped up. Sirrah, I teach thee a speech. Mark it, Nuncle. Head more than thou showest. Speak less than thou knowest. Learn less than thou owest. Learn more than thou throwest. Thou shalt have more than two things to score. My fool, that's nothing. Nothing? 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 Can you make no use of nothing, Nuncle? Nothing can come of nothing, my boy. Hmm. Dost thou know the difference between my boy, a bitter fool, and a sweet one? Dost thou call me fool, boy? All thy other titles thou hast been giving away that thou was born with. <laughs> this is not altogether, uh, not altogether a fool, my lord. I did the wrong. Thou should have not been all, till thou had been wise. <laughs> well, let me not be bad. Sweet heaven, I will not be mad. How now, Nanto? If thou last will have thee wit. <coughs> I marvel what the king thou and thy daughters are. They had me wit for speaking truth. Thou had me wit for lying. And sometimes I am weak for holding my peace. I'd rather be any kind of thing than a fool. And yet, I would not be thee, Nanko. Thou hast spared thy wit on both sides. And left nothing in the middle. <laughs> Oh, my daughter. Not only, sir, this, your all licensed fool, but other of your insolent retinue do hourly cark and quarrel, breaking forth in rank and not to be endured riots. Are you our daughter? I would you would make use of your good wisdom. Does any know me here? This is not Lear. Who is it here that can tell me who I am? Lear 
shadow, shadow, shadow. <laughs> Being old and reverent should be wise. Here do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so debauched and bold, that this our court, infected by their manners, shows like a riotous inn. Darkness and devils! Darkness and devils! Disquantity you are trained by half, and let the remainders be such men which know how to behave. Darkness and devils. Call my train together and settle my horses. Degenerate bastard! Yet I have another doctor. You strike my people, and your disordered rabble make servants of their betters. Oh, oh, come you now. Huh. Is this your will, sir? Whoa, the too late repents. Speak, sir. In gratitude. Thou marble-hearted fiend, more hideous when thou showest thee in a child than in a sea monster. Detested kite! My train of men of all particulars of duty know. Oh, Cordelia, Leah, Leah, beat at this gate to fit thy folly in. In thy dear just without. Go, go, my people. My lord, I am guiltless as I am ignorant of what had moved you. Hear me, nature. Hear me, dear goddess. Suspend thy purpose if thou didn't intend this creature to be proven. Into her womb convey sterility. Dry up in her the organs of increase. And from her delicate body never spring a babe to honor her. If she must team, turn all her mother's pains and benefits to laughter and contempt so that she may feel how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. Where else come this? His dotage gives it. What? Does he have my hands at the club? What's the matter? How tell me? Life and death. I am ashamed that thou hast shaken my manhood thus. Blast and falls upon me. Yea, is it come to this? Ha, let it be so. I have another daughter who I am sure is kind and comfort.
rather than praise for harmful mildness. Oh, nay then. Oh. Well, well, be it. You shall be ours. 
the natures of such deep trust, we shall much need. I still serve you, sir. Truly. Your graces are right, well. My father has sent God to take my brother. Now, God, stand up for bastards. <laughs> Good dawning to thee, friend. Art of this house? Where may we set our horses? In the mire. Prithee, thou lovest me, tell me. I love thee not. Why then, I care not for thee. Oh, I would make thee care for me. Why dost thou use me thus? I know thee not. Thou, I know thee. And what dost thou know me for? A neighbor, a rascal. An ear of broken wings, a base, proud, shallow beggar, three suited, hundred pound, worsted, stocking, nay, a little bit self-serving. Whoremonger, did he go wrong? Oh. 
Duke's to blame. This will be untaken. Time for now. <laughs> I heard myself proclaim that by the happy hollow of a tree escaped the hunt. No port is free, no place that God, and with most unusual vigilance, does not attempt my taking. Whilst I may escape, I'll preserve myself and every thought to take the basest and most poorest shape that ever penury and contempt of man brought near to peace. My face. I will fill, blanket my loins. Elf, all my hair in knots. And with presented nakedness, I'll face the winds and persecutions of the sky. The country can be proof and precedent of better beggars who with roaring voices, striking and none that mortify bare arms. Pins, wooden bricks, nails, sprigs of rosemary. With this world of logic from low farms, poor pelting villages, sheep coats and mills. Sometime we loom to bed. Sometime we prayers for their charity. Poor Tally God. Poor Tom. But something yet. Edgar and nothing am. Thou be shamed by pastime? No, my lord. <laughs> you wear a cruel little garters. What's he that so mistook thy place to set thee here? It's he and she, your son and daughter. No. I. I say no. I say yea. Mm -hmm. By Jupiter, I say no! By Juno, I say... Aye. <laughs> they durst not do it. Could not. Would not do it. By this worse than murder, to do upon respect such violent outrage. Where is this daughter? Uh, with the Duke within, my lord. Follow me not. Stay here. <laughs> How's the king's revenue so few a number? And he that said in the stacks for that question. Thou will deserve it, but I will tell it. The fool will stay and let the wise man fly. The nay turns fool that runs away. <laughs> the nay, the fool no may say I. Where learned you this, fool? Not in the stocks, fool. <laughs> <laughs> the king, oh, the king. speak with Cornwall and his wife. The dear father would with his daughter speak and command her service. Hell to your grace. I am glad to see your highness. Reagan, I think you are. Oh, Reagan, your sister's not. She had tied sharp to bronchitis. Like a vulture. I pray you, sir, take patience. I cannot think my sister in the least would fail of her obligation. My curse is on her. Oh, sir, you are old. I pray you to return you to my sister. Say you have wronged her, sir. Ask her. 
her forgiveness? Do you but mark how this becomes the house? I confess, dear daughter, I am old. On my knees, oh, I beg. Good sir, no more. Return you to my sister. Never, Reagan! She hath abated me of half my train, looked down upon me, and struck me with her tongue, most serpent like upon the very heart. Fie, sir, fie! Oh, you nimble lightnings, dart your blinding flames into her scornful eyes. Oh, the blessed gods! So will you wish on me when the rash mood is on. Oh, no, 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 Regan, no. Uh, thou shalt never have my curse. It is not in thee. Thou no better is the offices of nature, the bonds of childhood. But who comes? Oh, heavens. Art thou ashamed to look upon this beard? Reagan, you'll take our hand? Why not by the hand, sir? Wherein have I offended? Pray you, Father, being uh, weak, seems so. Come with her and fifty of my men dismissed? At your own choice, sir. I pray thee, daughter, do not make me mad. I will not trouble thee, my child. Farewell. We will no longer speak, no longer see one another. I can be patient. I can stay with Reagan. I and my hundred staff. Not altogether so. Is this not spoken? I entreat you, sir, to bring but five and twenty. I gave you all. And in good time you gave it. Must I come to you with five and twenty vagants? Said you so. And speak to again, my lord. No more with me. Our wicked creatures yet do look well favored when <laughs> others are more wicked. I will go with thee. Thy fifty doth double her five and twenty, and thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord. What need you five and twenty? Ten or five? What need one? Oh, reason not to need. Our basis beggars are in the poorest thing superfluous. You see me here, you gods, an old man as full of grief as age. Oh, you unnatural hags, I will have such revenges on you, folk, that all the world shall. I will do such things but they are, yet I know not what they shall be, the terrors, the <coughs> terrors of the earth. You think I'll weep. No, I'll not weep. This heart shall break into a hundred flaws before I'll weep. <laughs> oh, I shall go mad. I shall go back. Ah! Let us withdraw. <coughs> Twill be a storm. This house is little. The uh, old man and his people cannot be well bestowed. Tis his own blame has put himself for rest and needs must taste his folly. As for his own self, I'll receive him gladly, but not one follower. So am I proposed. <clears throat> the king is in a foul mood. Tis best to give him way. He leads himself. Alack, the night comes on and the 
Violent winds do sorely blow. For miles about, there's scarce a bush. Close up the doors, my lord. Tis a wild night. I should die for it, as 
has been threatened me, the king, my master, must be revenged. There are foul things afoot, and pray you be careful. This the Duke shall instantly know. And of that letter, too. That's which my father loses, no less than all. The younger rises when the old doth fall. Spot is not 
in the evidence. Thou rogue man of justice, take my place. I 
I will arraign her first. Just call her real. Here, I take my oath before this honorable assembly. She kicked the poor king, her father. Come hither. Is your name Goneril? She cannot deny it! No, you she foxes. No, no. And here's another whose warmth looks proclaim which door her heart is made on. Stop her there! Stop her! Oaths! Oaths! Sword! Fire! Corruption in the palace! False justice! Why dost thou lift her up, Why? Bless thy five wits, my lord. Where is the patience that you so often spoke of? Is there no cause in nature that makes these hard hearts? You, sir, I entertain for one of my hundreds. Only I do not like the fashion of your garments. You will say they are of Persian attire. But let them be changed. My lord, will you not lie down and rest a while? Make no noise. Make no noise. Draw the curtain. So we will go to supper in the morning. And I go to sleep at noon. I go to sleep at noon. Where is the king, my master? The rest. But his wits have escaped him. There is a threat of death upon him. Get him away to Dover. There they will meet both welcome and protection. Away! Get thee away! Go! Oh, go! My lord, my lord, we must leave now! We must leave! Supper? Yes, yes. Supper? Yes, yes, supper. Is it the morning? My lord, please, please, be warm and get Calm the cold. Oh. Love cools. Friendship falls off, brothers divide. The bond cracked, with son and father. Ingrateful Fox, tis he! Bind fast his corky arms. Yes. What means your grace? Pray, friends, be careful. Do me no harm, friends. Find him, I say. Hard, hard, O oh filthy traitor! Unmerciful lady, as you are, I am none. Where hast thou sent the king? To Dover. Wherefore to Dover? Because I would not see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes. Sith, thou shalt never. Fellow, hold the chair. Whoa! What are you doing, my lord? Hold your hand. I served you ever since I was a child. The best service never have I done you than now to bid you hold. How now, you talk, my villain? Huh, let it in. Come and take this chance of anger. Of thy treasons to us. 
and jaws into the ranks of death. My most dear Gloucester. <laughs> oh, the difference of man and man. To thee a woman's services are due. A fool usurps my bed. Madam, my lord, come hence. Huh, I have been worth the whistle. Oh, Goneril, you are not worth the dust in which the rude wind blows in your face. <laughs> no more, you are foolish. What have you done? Tigers, not daughters. What have you performed? Milk-livered man. See thyself, devil. <laughs> Work my fitness to obey these hands. They are apt enough to dislocate and tear thy flesh and bone. Oh, marry thy manhood, you. <laughs> What news? Oh, my good lord, the Duke of Cornwall is dead. Slain by his servant while he's putting out the eyes of Gloucester. Gloucester's eyes? This letter, madam, gracious me to reply. Oh. It is from your sister. One way I like this well, but my sister Reagan being widow, and my Edmund with her, may be plotting by their fancy to pluck upon my hateful life. I'll read an answer. <laughs> Where was his son Edmund when they did take his eyes? Knowing he the wickedness? Aye, my lord. But she informed against him, snitched. <laughs> <laughs> where they stand. Give your hand. Away. You are now within a foot of the extreme verge. For all the need to move, but I not be for that. Away. Get thee away. Let, let go my hand. Let me hear you say something, and then let me hear you walk away. Well, good son. With all my heart. 
Why I do trifle thus with his despair. It's done to kill him. Oh, you mighty gods, this world I do renounce and cast off my afflictions. Now, fellow, fare thee well. Oh, you, sir, friend, what are you, sir? Away and let me die. Speak yet again. Thy life's a miracle. Well, have I died or not? Fallen from the dread summit of this chalky cliff. Do but look up. Alack, I have no eyes. Give me your hand. Up so. How is it? You feel you your legs. You stand. Too well, too well. Therefore, thou happy father, think that the clearest gods who make them honors of men's impossibilities have preserved me. Now remember, henceforth I will bear my affliction till it calls out on its own, enough, enough, and die. Bear free and patient thoughts. But who comes here? <laughs> They cannot touch me for crime. I am the king himself. I know that papa's voice. It must be the king. Every inch a king. When I do stare, see how the subject quakes. <laughs> I, I pardon that man's life. What was thy cause? Adulterate. Thou shalt not die. Die for adultery. The copulation thrive. <laughs> for Gloucester's bastard son was kinder to his father than the two daughters I got between the lofty streets. Oh, let me kiss thy hand. Let me wipe it first. It smells of mortality. Why, you ruined piece of nature! Do you not know me? I remember thine eyes well enough. Yet you see how this world goes? I see it feelingly. What, man? A man can see how this world goes without eyes. Look with thine ears. Or did you glass eyes? And like a scurvy politician, seem to see the things thou dost not. Oh, my reason. Oh, reason and madness. <laughs> but, I don't know. I know thee well enough. I know thee well enough now. No, you do not. I know thee well enough. Thy name is Gloucester. Thou must. Alack, alack the day. When we are born, we cry that we have come to this great stage of food. Oh, here he is. Knights, lay hands upon him. Sir, what a prisoner? Your most dear daughter Cordelia. What a prisoner? I am the king himself. No, you bet. You are a royal one, and we obey you. Then there's life in it. Nay, and thou gets it. And thou shalt get to my running. Sal, 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 Oh, ye gods, take my breath away. Away, old man. Give me your hand. Away. No, no further, sir. A man may run. Even here. Men must endure. They are going hence. 
even as they are going hither. Right, Mr. Soul? Too true, too true. Now, good sir, what are you?
take them away. You, come here. Take out this note. Go. You have my commission to hang Cordelia and lay the blame upon her own despair that she did kill herself. I'll do it, my lord. My state stands on me to defend, not to debate. <laughs> So 
some good I need to do, despite mine own nature. Quick, send to the prisons. Be brief in it, for my wit is on the life of the earth. Quite dear. The gods defend her. Had I your eyes and tongues, I would crack heaven's bolt that I might see her again. She is gone forever. Plague on you murderers and traitors all! Bear them from hence. Our business is general woe. I have a journey yet to go. My master calls me. I will not say no. Wait, with sad time, we must. Obey, speak what we feel, not what we ought to say. The oldest had borne most. We that are young shall never see so much, nor live so long.
like to one more rich in Feature like him, like him with friends possess. Desiring this man's art and that man's scope. What I most enjoy.